Well, first of all, let's step back, okay? <clears throat> years and years ago, I, I had a benefit of studying with a man named R. Buckminster Fuller. He's considered a futurist. And he invented the geodesic dome and all this. And my poor dad, I had rich dad and a poor dad. And my poor dad just adored him because my poor dad was an academic PhD from Stanford, University of Chicago, Northwestern, University of Hawaii. So the academics loved Bucky Fuller. And he built the geodesic dome in 1967. I hitchhiked, I was a school in New York, went from Hawaii to New York, and I hitchhiked to Montreal, Canada, to Expo 67, the World's Fair on the Future, because I like looking into the future. <laughs> And Bucky's dome, Bucky Fuller's dome was there. It was a U.S. pavilion at Expo 67. And I went through there. I said, man, that guy thinks differently. You know, Buckminster Fuller. So just check him out. And my, uh, when I was a kid, my poor dad used to have me, he'd have me building the structures of um, universe, he called them, like t squares, tetrahedrons, icosahedrons, dodexahedrons. I'm like 10 years ago. What the hell am I studying this stuff for, you know? But it affected my brain because I was working with my hands. So I was doing math with little sticks and glue and things like this. I say, I can prove I said this stuff. So I said, the biggest stock market crash is still coming. And this was after the 2008 crash. And the reason I could predict that the, 2000, the 2008 crash was just a prelude for the bigger crash coming, which we are in today in 2022. I mean, even China's crashing today because they never fixed the problem. In fact, the whole problem is that the global economic system is rigged. It's called the central bank system. You know, the Bank of Japan, the Bank of England, uh, Bank of Tok, Bank of Japan, and stuff like this. This whole system is rigged. So Fuller, Fuller passed away in 1970. 1983 and 84, his book came out called The Grunch of Giants. And so he was already dead. And I'm reading Grunch of Giants and Grunch of Giants stands for gross universal cash heist. It's how our wealth <clears throat> is stolen via our money. And that fit my whole internal belief system. You know, I mean, if, you, if you don't believe it, you think he's a whack job. But in 1984, I said, man, this guy is on to it. You know, Fuller is on to it. So I read Grunch of Giants. And that's how I can write books like Prophecy. Shit, you know, he's bullshitting. Read the fucking book. That's what I'm saying. You know, I mean, I I, I, I practice what I preach. And I, I do what I say I'm doing. So anyway, that's how I could write Prophecy. And as you know, in 2021, China collapsed. And that's why COVID appeared again. Notice that? So Evergrande, which is the biggest, I think it's bigger than uh, Lehman Brothers crash. And Evergrande's going down. Now, when real estate goes down, it's, it's a financial crash more than anything else. They have 90 million condos in China not occupied. So what that does is it's, it's this big sucking sound, you know, like it's going down the toilet right now. When real estate goes down, it takes all the economies of the world with it. Like, you know, Australia, one of my favorite countries, ships a lot of supplies to China. And there, Australia was booming because China was booming with real estate. And so in 2021, when it collapsed, that means Australia collapses more. But that's why I think Australia locked the country down also. Everybody's a stay indoor with all this. I personally think they're afraid of civil unrest. Hmm. And so I think that's why, you know, COVID appeared um, in, you know, September 17, 2019, our repo market collapsed. And the repo market is the shadow banking system, as they call it. As you know, I want to th thank you for supporting me when I was the, uh, I was chicken little, you know, crying, the, the sky is falling. In Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which is this book here, you know, I said such blasphemous things as your house is not an asset, Ooh. the rich don't work for money, and savers are losers. I got attacked. Like you have, I'm, you've been attacked, I've been attacked. But man, they came after me because I was stepping on some big toes. When you say savers are losers, that's the bankers. And, you, and when you say the, the rich don't uh, work for money and all this stuff, I'm going against education. And the, my theme on this book has always been what the school teach you about money. 
answers nothing. It's crickets, you know, just do, 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 nothing. And then today, instead, they're talking about critical race theory that they want to change boys to girls and all this other stuff. I'm going, I don't want to change from boy to girl. I'm quite happy being a male, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and, and just recently, like, oh, uh, about a few months ago, they called parents terrorists in America because they actually dared to challenge the education system. They, they want to know what the heck they're teaching the kids. So these parents are in these, these huge rooms and, you know, what, what do you call them, PTA meetings or Parent Teachers Association meetings. The parents are up and down and they get labeled terrorists. So something, you know, Brian, it's, it's, I'm afraid it's going to get worse. That's why I write. That's why I speak. And again, I want to thank you for supporting me years and years ago when I was just this whack job, Chicken Little, running around <laughs> saying stupid things. <laughs> but unfortunately, don't fight the Fed. I mean, they're idiots. But unfortunately, without financial education in our schools, you can't blame them. But they don't know what a, a, what a bear market looks like. And they don't know what inflation looks like because inflation has made them rich because the Fed, you know, what, what do they say? 40% of all money was printed in the last two years or something, some stuff like that. I don't know if it's true or not. But the M2, the money supply is so huge today because they're trying to prevent the balloon from collapsing. They're doing, they're desperate. Yeah. So when you take financial advice, be careful on their age. You and I have the wisdom, you know, I'd rather be 25 years old, but there's something, I, I just turned 75 and there's something good about being 75. At least you've been screwed enough times to wake up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. It and everybody depends upon the U.S. printing, 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 printing. But that's why I watched China. And when Evergrande came down in 2021, the biggest real estate collapse in history, bigger than 2008. And all of a sudden, they lock people down with COVID. You know, I'm going, I've seen this story before because it happened in 2019. They're desperate, Brian. They're desperate. They're looking for anything that can save, stop this thing. But, but you know, every time they said to me, don't fight the Fed, I'm saying, don't trust the Fed was my state. You know? <laughs> Why would I trust those SOBs? They're a central bank system. The Rothschilds and all those guys control them. The richest families in the world control the central banks. And you said you pull the you pull the curtain aside. It's like the story of the Wizard of Oz. You know, you pull the curtain aside. There's a little guy back there called the Fed chairman trying to keep the um, economy from collapsing on them. But th they're going to keep printing and printing and printing until the thing is destroyed. That's and, my prediction. And is it going to, I mean, are they backed into a corner now? Is it getting to a point where they just can't keep printing to save it? And is that what we're seeing? All of these little cracks in the system from inflation to these hikes. And I mean, QE was working for a couple of years. Is this the beginning of the end of that system being able to keep printing to save us? Well, there's people much smarter than me who say, say that. 